This is the new mid-2017 MacBook Pro 15, and as you can see, it doesn't look any different to last year's model. What's changed is on the inside. We now get Intel's latest 7th gen Cable Lake processors, the option to add AMD's latest RX 500 series graphics cards, along with up to 50% faster storage. But pretty much everything else is the same. You've got the same beautifully crafted aluminium unibody, which looks great in space gray, the 15.4 inch Retina display with P3 color gamut, the four USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, touch bar, massive phone size trackpad, and the love or hate butterfly mechanism keyboard. But it also runs the same macOS Sierra software rather than the recently announced High Sierra, which is coming later in 2017. So I have pretty much the top spec 15 inch touch bar model here with a 2.9 gigahertz Intel Core i7, RX 560 graphics card, that's the best one you can go for, along with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. But I really don't want to tell you how much this thing costs because I'm afraid you'll just stop the video now and, and subscribe out of sheer disgust. This thing costs £2,700 or $2,800, although the entry-level 15-inch model starts from just £1,899 or $1,999. So let's get down to brass tacks. How much faster is the new 2017 model compared to last year's 2016? Well, I've run a few benchmarks testing both the processor and the graphics, but full disclosure, because I haven't benchmarked all the previous models myself, I am using some of Macworld.com's data to compare it to. The tests are the same, and I'm comparing it to the equivalent 2016 specs. So kicking things off with the Geekbench CPU test, the new MacBook Pro was 16% faster in single core performance and 19% faster in multi-core than the 2016 model. This is actually way more than I thought considering Cable Lake chips tend to offer around 5-10% to performance improvements over Skylake on Windows machines, so that's pretty impressive. As for graphics, I ran the Cinebench OpenGL test to find out how much faster the new 4 gig RX 560 graphics card in the MacBook Pro is. But the results show a fairly significant boost of 24% over last year's model with the RX 460. But overall for the 2017 MacBook Pro 15 with RX 560, we're looking at an average speed boost of a little under 20%, although we may see bigger improvements when macOS High Sierra comes out later in the year, which will be better optimized for the Cable 8 chips, including being able to take advantage of the 10-bit 4K HEVC video codec, which also includes hardware acceleration. So basically, your videos will load faster and consume less battery life. Now for me as a video producer, the main reason I go out and buy a top spec MacBook Pro like this is for video editing, specifically 4K video editing. And I'm pleased to say, as you'd expect considering the price and the specs, the MacBook Pro comfortably handles 4K 60 FPS video files in Premiere Pro shot on my Panasonic GH5. But one thing I did notice while editing video, which you can probably hear right now, is how loud the fan gets. It's actually quite distracting. It's not as loud as the older MacBook Pros were, but the good news is while the fan noise may be a bit annoying, it does keep the laptop cool. Using this handy laser thermometer, I found that actually the body never went above 40 degrees Celsius, which is very good considering previous MacBook Pros would often uh, not quite burn your leg, but they'd be seriously uncomfortable when they got hot. So fan noise may still be a bit of an issue, not a major deal breaker, but at least it does keep the MacBook Pro very cool. But one thing I know a fair few people will be a bit annoyed about, especially if you're a power user or you use a lot of demanding programs, is that you're still limited to 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. There's no 32 gig option. And considering other high-end laptops like the Dell XPS 15 do come with 32 gigabyte DDR4 options, it's definitely gonna be disappointing for some professionals. But for most of us, it's not really a big deal. Despite this though, the MacBook Pro can comfortably handle intensive 4K video editing and everything from opening apps, browsing the web, and pretty much anything else you want to do is fast and smooth. As for battery life, well, Apple once again claims the 2017 MacBook Pro will give you 10 hours of battery life. And once again, that's actually not far off the case. Obviously, it depends on what you're doing, and if you're uh, using the graphics card, that will reduce it significantly. I found that one hour of Netflix running on Safari with 50% brightness used just 7% of the battery. So generally, battery life is actually very good. And with average use of browsing the web, watching a few videos, using Office apps, tiny bit of video editing, I comfortably got between seven and eight hours. But don't expect anything more than, say, two or three if you're editing, like, 4K video, for example. 
So of course the main talking point with the new mid-2017 models is the increase in performance. It's kind of just a spec bump. But while I have you, I do have a few thoughts generally on the new MacBook Pros. Firstly, it is unquestionably a beautiful device. I think it's the most premium and well-built laptop on the market in my opinion. And everything from the bright 500 nit screen with its professional P3 color gamut to the almost comically huge and super responsive trackpad that is a joy to use in Mac OS. Now I don't actually have that much of a problem with the port selection. I know a lot of people do and while I say port selection there's just four USB-C, Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. It's definitely annoying at first, but once you invest in a good USB-C hub or adapter, as long as you remember to bring it with you, it's not really a problem, I don't think. But overall, both the 2016 and 2017 MacBook Pros are a lot better looking than the older 2015 model, which looks comparatively chunky and old fashioned in comparison. So I think it's a genuinely lovely machine to use, but I do have a couple of issues. Firstly, I'm still not sold on the touch bar. It looks cool, but I find simple things like changing the volume or brightness takes a little bit longer than just using normal function keys. And it's very difficult to see if you're outside or using it in bright sunlight. On the other hand, the fingerprint reader is really handy and works every time. I also can't decide if I like the keyboard. The second generation butterfly mechanism keys are an acquired taste and you do get used to it, but I think it may put some people off to start with. It's also a bit of a shame considering how powerful these are now, the gaming on macOS is still so limited, but that's a conversation for another video. And finally, of course, the price. I mean, 2,700 pounds is ridiculous. And considering the competition, like the Dell XPS 15, for example, costs nearly a grand less. And that has a 4K touchscreen and all the ports you could need. But then again, if you're invested in the Apple ecosystem and you can afford it, then absolutely go for it. It is a terrific laptop. Anyway, to round up this review, if you have last year's 2016 MacBook Pro, there's really no need to upgrade. The performance difference isn't that significant. But at the same time, the 2017 is unquestionably the fastest and best model to go for. So if you have a 2015 or earlier MacBook, I definitely recommend upgrading, not only for the performance, but the better screen with its wider color gamut and the more premium design. So a modest spec bump overall, but it helps the MacBook Pro stay competitive in 2017. And if you can afford it and you prefer Mac OS to Windows, I definitely recommend it. So I hope you found this review helpful. I've put links to the latest models in the description below and let me know what you make of the MacBook Pro in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.